just turning the bowl around. And, and um, so we're turning the bowl around and holding it on the left or holding it on the right as we turn at the waist, all right? So the ne this ne next exercise, we're going to start, holding, start out holding the ball and we're gonna push the ball, I'm sorry, we start out holding the ball and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our hands, our palms to the left as if we're pushing out at something to the left. The fingers are facing forward. And then we come back to center holding the ball. Now we turn to the right. And as we turn to the right, we extend the right elbow back and turn the palm out and, and then push the left palm out in front as if we're pushing something to the right now. So basically what we're doing is we're turning the palms, pushing to the side, to the left, turning to the front, holding back to holding a ball, pushing to the other side, turning, pushing to the other side. Fingers are always pointing forward. So you have to rotate your palms so they're both facing the other side with the fingers pointing forward. To the right, to the left, to the right and to the left. So if I turn around and do this, it may be easier for you to see. I push to the left. My left elbow is jutted back straight and the hands and palms are lined up with the palms facing out, fingers pointing forward. Now as I rotate around to the right, I turn the palms to the right so, they're ro so that the rotation shows that my palms are facing out. The fingers pointing forward and the elbow, my right elbow pointed back. And now I'm just gonna continue the rotation to the left, to the right. Rotate around the waist, left, right, left, right. To the left and to the right. Okay, good. I'm gonna go ahead and. Okay, so I'm at the different computer, so you should be able to see me well. This Elizabeth. Yeah, I can. I can. Well, I don't see. I see you. Yes. Okay. Let me let me pin you on this. Okay. So yeah, that's better. Okay. Thank you. Um, move back a little bit. Move back further. A little bit more. All right. So you're visually impaired? You have yeah, a visual I'm blind. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, all right. So good. I can see you now and I may be able to help you a little bit. So uh, it is now, what, what time is it? I, I, I want to make sure that we cover everything I want to cover. Does anyone have? It's 11.30. Okay. Okay, so let's move along with these exercises and then we'll get right into the Tai Chi, all right? So the next exercise that I want to introduce is um, it's going to be a leg exercise. Now, um, it's, it's, going to, it's going to involve the legs, but we're going to use the hands. And we did this last week. You're gonna, you're gonna sit, sit up straight, and you're going to, to uh, have your, make two fists and bring your fist to your side, all right? To your side with your elbows pointed back and the palms facing up. Good, Elizabeth. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch straight out. And as we punch straight out, we're gonna twist. Exactly, very good, Elizabeth. All right, you can teach this class. All right, ready? As I punch out with my right hand, I'm gonna kick out with my left leg, slowly. All right, and then we're gonna bring the leg and the, and the arm in. Punching out with the left hand, kicking out with the right leg, and slowly bring the leg and the hand back together. So in Tai Chi, all of the movements end up at the same time when we, when we use 
uh, either our hands or and our legs. We're using our legs and our hands, for example. The, the final position of the foot in a particular form uh, always ends up at the same time as the final position of the hands. So everything is balanced and coordinated, all right? So this is good practice to, 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 um, to get into the habit of doing that properly. So I'm gonna punch with the left hand, kick with the right, and back. We always come back to position and back and forth. One, two. And as we push out, punch out, we, we inhale because it's a stretch. It's a yang move, right? Inhale, we come back and relax, it's exhale. Time your breathing, slowly relax. Time your breathing to the movements. Inhale, punch, kick. Exhale, relax. Inhale, punch, kick. Exhale, relax. Focus your mind and attention on the movements. It helps sometimes to look out into the distance rather than focus on any one thing. That helps relax the mind. You're using your mind to control the movements and the tension in the breathing and the relaxation. So there's a lot of intent a lot of intent in this. It's not just aimlessly going through these motions. It's a way of relaxing the mind, building strength, developing good posture skills, patience, equanimity, balance. Okay. And it's always nice to end with what I call a closing breath, which is simply to put your hands on with your palms up on your thighs and then extend your hands out and up and imagine you're gathering energy and bringing the energy up, taking a deep breath and pushing the energy down as we exhale slowly and relax. Okay, let's move down further. Now we're gonna move down to the, to the feet, which means I have to move back here and uh, I'm gonna see if I can find myself here. I'm getting used to this. Yeah, there I am. Okay. So I still got you, Elizabeth. I still have you. I can see where I am. I have to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. All right. Okay. So everybody should be able to see my foot. I'm standing, but you should still see my foot. If you can't see my foot, let me know. I'm going to put my toe down, pick, put my heel up. And I'm going to rotate around the toe. So I'm rotating using my foot, my toe, as a fulcrum. Now, you're rotating almost as mu much as you can. Try to go 180 degrees. Of course, that's really hard to do. Lift your heel, and rotate. I do a lot of, gee, I, I do a lot of Kung Fu that requires a lot of twisting and turning using uh, kind of difficult sorts of positions that you put your feet in and ankles in. And so I do this exercise every day before I do these things. And now if you put your foot down, now if you put your foot down and relax, you should feel like you've exercised your ankle. Can you feel it in your ankle? 
All right, I hope that answers yes to that. Now put your foot down and rotate from side to side. So now you're pushing, you're, 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 you're turning your foot from side to side. It's okay to move your knee with your foot. This is an excellent exercise for the foot. And let's go to the next one. Now, for all of you people, for some of you people who can't or don't have the use of your feet, okay, you can do, use, take this opportunity to exercise your wrist, all right? So what you can do is, is do this exercise with your wrist. What I'm doing is this thumbs up, rotating both hands, the right hand is rotating clockwise, the left counterclockwise. And then go the other way. So now you're, you're pushing the thumbs down and the right hand is moving counterclockwise and the left hand is moving clockwise. So I want everybody to take advantage of this opportunity, this hour, to exercise some joint, all right? Whether it's the foot or the ankle. So I'm gonna continue, or you can do them both at the same time if you want. That's sort of challenging, but you can do them both at the same time. So I'm rotating my left ankle around the toe, using the toe as a fulcrum. And now I'm putting my left foot down and going from side to side. Okay, good. So yeah, there are lots of, there's a, there are lots and lots of a ton of Qigong exercises uh, that you can do. And if you like this kind of stuff, you can go online and uh, find uh, everything you want to know about Qigong. Qigong, uh, again, is a more of a breathing exercise. It's done for health uh, and relaxation. There's no martial intent in it. And generally, there are no forms that are linked together as a set. So Qigong is very popular uh, because you don't have to memorize a set of movements in a particular order, like a choreographed um, kind of thing. Um, and again, in, in Qigong, it's the breath that controls the movement. So as you stretch, any kind of a stretching uh, element, there's always a stre stretching and relaxation element in Qigong. During the stretch, we breathe in. During the relaxation part, we breathe out. And if you really want to get the full benefit of it, you want to use a kind of breathing called Buddha breathing or natural breathing. Um, it's the way we normally breathe, but it accent accentuates the movement of the stomach, of the abdomen, in and out. As you take a deep breath in, the ab goes out, the stomach goes out, and you kind of imagine that you're taking breath into your stomach, but of course you're not. And then as you breathe out, you want to contract the stomach and tense the muscles in your, in your stomach. And so in that way, you're forcing more air into your body. So you're oxygenating your blood more effectively, more efficiently. And at the same time, you're, you're exercising all of the muscles in your abdomen. So you're getting that ad added benefit from it. Uh, you can try that if you want. Otherwise, just breathe naturally for a while until you get comfortable with the movements. And then you can add this breathing, this Buddha breath element to it. Uh, in Tai Chi, it's the other way around. In Tai Chi, you don't think too much about breathing. It's the form that really controls the breathing. So the breathing kind of comes naturally. Okay, so... Let's continue with, um, with the Sun Style 12 movements that we're learning. And we're going to go over the first movement, which is, the, um, which is called the Commencement Movement. So for the Commencement Movement, we sit up straight, we get into our Tai Chi posture. The hands are just 
relaxed with the fingers pointing down at the side. And as we breathe in, we're in a state of total emptiness called Wuji. We're totally relaxed. We have no form, no energy, nothing going on. We take a few deep breaths and when we're ready to begin, we raise the hands, the arms straight out, and the fingers dangling down, and we take a deep breath in. Very good. And we just hold the hands out in front of us. And when they're directly out in front of us, we rotate the hands in, bringing the hands down slightly to the midsection. Now again, the fingers are going to be pointing down. And then as we rotate the hands in, the fingers are going to be pointing out straight. And we bring the hands in, Elizabeth, to the chest. So now bring your hands in. Good. And bring them in and bring them down a little bit. Good, right there. The next move is we're going to push the hands out, pointing fingers, pointing straight out. Just push them out like we're holding a bowl. And now bring the ball back in again to the chest. Good. And now we're going to do something called open and close. That's step number two. Very simple. We just pretend we're holding a ball that's under pressure. And we're just releasing the pressure, releasing the pressure and letting the ball expand out just past the shoulders, not too far. As we breathe in, we're mimicking the, 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 um, the physical movement of the, of the lungs. And now as we breathe out, we compress the ball back to the chest, just where we started, and stop right there. So that's, that's the commencement and open and close. So let's try that again. I'm going to turn sideways. So you can see what it looks like from the side. Sit up straight, relax, take a deep breath, slowly breathe in. Fingers pointing down, dangling down like icicles. Breathe in. When we're fully extended, we bring the hands in close to the chest and down slightly. It's kind of a rotation up and down. And then we push out. Fingers extending out, still holding the ball. Bring the ball in as we breathe in. And open. And close. Breathe out. Like an accordion, like we're accordion or a beach ball that's under, under pressure. All right. And one more time. Relax. Bring the hands up, fingers pointing down, inhale. Out straight, bring the hands in, rotating down to the chest. Good. Push out straight. Good, straight out. Bring the hands in again and open and close. Open and close. Try to feel a gentle resistance. So as you bring your hands up, you can feel as if kind of like there's a slight weight on your wrist. And as you bring the ball in and down, feel like maybe there's an elastic band attached to it. So there's a little bit of tension against pulling it in. And as you push out, again, feel like it's kind of sticking to your, to your chest. So you have to kind of push it away. And as you bring it in, again, there's that tension. And as you open and close, you feel this just a little bit of tension opening and you feel some tension as if you're compressing ball, pushing back. So this feeling of controlled resistance, controlled resistance is really important in Tai Chi because without it, you can't feel what's going on in your body. That's just the way it works. All right. So now I'd like to, uh, like you to do it on your own. All right, and well, I'm gonna call the moves out, but I'm not gonna do them. And I'm gonna get up here, I'm looking at it, I'm gonna try to look at everybody if I can. It's really hard, you know, teaching with this virtual stuff, it's really hard. So sometimes, like Elizabeth, the lighting is really bad. She's probably got a light on in front of her, right? Well, I can see her, but you know, the light isn't, isn't great. 
And Ruth, I see Ruth, but there's all this, there's this, or Barbara, I see Barbara and her, but in the, in the distance, it looks like there's, I'm looking at the cosmos and the, what is, what is going on back there? I see this beautiful green thing moving along. All right. Anyway, I'm coming down here. Char looks, I could, she's very clear. Char is very clear. So is Roma wearing a blue dress. Lori, this is great. I can see everybody. Marjorie, yeah, okay, good. So I'm gonna try to watch you and uh, when you do it. Now make sure that I can see what's going on. So when you look at yourself, if you can't see your hands, I can't see your hands either, all right? So you may have to adjust your screen. All right, so go ahead guys, go ahead and try it. So we're gonna relax, we're gonna be sitting up straight. Just take it easy, relax, let your mind relax, your body relax. Take a few deep breaths. Hands at your sides. And bring, raise your arms slowly, fingers pointing down, hands straight out, slowly, slowly breathe in. And now bring your hands in like you're holding a ball to your chest. And now lower the hands slightly and push out, fingers pointing straight out like you're still holding the ball. And bring the ball back in Bring it in and open and close. All right, open and close. So if we count the movements, it's coming up holding a ball. Let's count the rotations. One, bring the ball in. Two, push the ball out. Three, bring the ball back in. So that there are three movements in and out before you do your open and close, all right? So it's bringing the hands up and in is one, pushing out is two, three, bringing it in and opening and closing. So if you just remember the magic number three, you should be able to do this, all right? So what we're really doing here, I mentioned this last time, is if you were using this uh, in, mar in a martial uh, context, you would be breaking breaking a hold, coming up like this, coming up straight. And then you'd be, the next step would be to bring your hands in to your chest and down slow, slightly to your, to your lower chest so that you can push against your, your core and push the person away, chest higher or, or waist higher. So what you're doing is really bringing your hands up and in, getting ready to push out. And so you're bringing your, what you're doing is harnessing energy, preparing to deliver a force. And the way you do that is by rotating out and in and then pushing out again. Kind of like the way the wheels on a locomotive work, where the flywheels on the edge come out and in and then push out again and, and pushing the locomotive forward. And if you want to get a, a visual idea of what this is like, and this is exactly what we're doing, is go online and look at, a, at the way a train wheels move, all right? And connect it to the axles or whatever that rod, the rods connect to the rods. So you're using your hands as rods to bring, the, the, to bring them out and in to, 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 like a flywheel, picking up energy. And once they're in, you get a chance to push out again. Um, I don't know if that metaphor works for you, but it does work for me. If you think about it, uh, everything makes uh, everything we do here makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, we shouldn't be doing it. Um, so form fits function here. Function follows form, and so forth. Now, okay. Now, step number three. We did commencement and open and close. Step number three is called single whip. Um, I'm going to check the time. Good, I've got 10 minutes to explain single whip. Single whip is taken after open and close, what, is, what you're going to do is you're gonna turn your hands so they're face out, facing out. That's all you're gonna do. It's very simple. As you push out slightly, a few inches, you're opening up the hands to the sides and your hand should be in a swallow formation, like the wings of a swallow, 
or forming a W is another way of looking at it, extended to the side, all right? So it's a, actually a very complex move, although it looks simple, is because as you're pushing out, you're extending open. So it's kind of like what you're doing is like, is like opening curtains. You know how you reach up and you grab the curtains and you open it up? So imagine you're reaching out, pushing out slightly, forward in the sagittal plane, which is forward slightly, and then out. But it's not two steps. It's not push out and open. It's pushing out and going into the open at the same time. So the, so the movements are blended together, right? Don't think of, we think of Tai Chi not in square terms, not in digital square terms. Uh, 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 turns or movements. We think of them as rounded, having shape. Uh, and Tai Chi is really, if the one thing, way you can characterize Tai Chi, if you had to use one word, it would be circles. The use of circles to generate forces. And Tai Chi of the, the three internal martial arts is the most complex because, it, because it's the most subtle. It uses these very subtle movements and changes in different planes using circular movements to generate a force. Notice that yin yang sign is circular. So it all comes back to this in one way or another. It's quite interesting. All right, so let's try that together. We're open and closed. And here we go. We're going to turn the hands out, push out, and extend. Beautiful. Very nice. Not too far. We don't want to be too far because if you extend your hands all the way out, you will feel a sensation of vulnerability, which is not what we want. We want to feel safe. And if we're way out here, we don't feel safe. If we're in here, we're crunched up. We feel uncomfortable. We're out here, we feel uncomfortable. We want to be just so, all right? About like this. So we want to keep these movements contained in, in, a, in a way that we can control them. Right? Uh, we have more, more control over things, moving to the next step, if we're not too far out or too far in like this. All right, I'm going to sit sideways and do it. So you can see the vectors, um, how, how far out uh, forward we go, which is a little hard to see when I'm facing you. So I'm, fisting, I'm, I'm sitting sideways and I'm opening and closing. I turn the hands out and I push out slightly as I rotate to the side. My hands up here, oh, about eye level, okay? So the movement is out, Push out straight and extend. Single whip. All right? So let's do it together one more time. Open and close. Turn the hands out. Push out slightly. Extend. Open the curtains. Slowly, single whip. Beautiful. All right. So let's start from the beginning and let's do the first three moves. What are they? Commencement, open and close, single whip. Let's try to do them seamlessly. Let's try to do them like move, like water moving, not never stopping. One form melding into the other, okay? But we're going to go slow, we're going to relax. The two main things, Tai Chi, slow and relax. Ready. We're in a state of emptiness. We draw up, fingers pointing down. We bring our hands in and slightly down to the chest, getting ready to deliver a force. We extend. Imagine we're pushing against the force. Straight out, nice and slow. Bring the hands in. That's the third rotation in. And open and close. Now turn the hands, palm facing out. Push out slightly and extend into our single whip. Beautiful. So, 
This is really interesting. At least I think it's interesting, and I'm going to share it with you. Um, for a long time, I've wondered, why do they call it single whip, right? Because a whip is a, you know, if you think of a whip, it's just kind of like a flexible noodle-like thing. And when you snap it, the end flip flops, right? Well, it turns out in China, a whip isn't always a whip, like, a, you know, flexible. A whip can be a rod. A rod is a whip. In fact, you can whip something with a rod, you know? If you think about, uh, I'm not in the horses, but I think something called a crop is actually uh, uh, like a stick with a little, like, piece of leather on the end. And so in China, people carry things. For centuries, people have been carrying things. Can everybody see that? No? Oh, no. Okay, I was hoping every... No, you can't see. Okay, it's an old man with a stick across his shoulders holding two heavy baskets hanging down from the end. Right? That's the way they carry things in the Far East. You see... Young girls carrying this, carrying huge amounts of weight with this thing, all right? And usually the thing is flexible and it bounces. So that rod is called a whip. Now notice this man, I don't know if you can see him, he's an old man. And so he's holding, I don't have my, I don't have a stick here. I don't have a stick here. But he's holding his hand, he's got the stick across his shoulders and he's holding his hand on one side of the stick. In the other hand, he's holding a cane, like this. Now, the classic Yang style, we do a single whip this way. This is Sun style. But the classic Yang style, which is much, much older, 700 years older than the style we do, the hand, the left hand is the same. But the right hand uses this paw position called a monkey paw. It looks like this. It's like when you take the tips of your fingers together and you hold it and it's down. This is used kind of like a claw to catch things, to catch an arm actually and push an arm aside. And their single whip looks like this. Their single whip looks like this. So this hand comes out to the front and this hand comes to the side. And this looks exactly like the old man holding, holding uh, his stick, uh, balancing, uh, carrying the heavy weights on the side, one hand draped out like this, and the other hand holding the cane like this. So that's the, that's the derivation of it. So there are different types of single whips. I know three or four um, that are used in different styles. Um, one is like we do, is and that's the easy way to do it. Uh, the other is this hand, uh, this hand comes in and turns and forms kind of like a Tai Chi symbol. And one hand comes back and the other hand extends open like this. And so you end up with one hand like this and one hand like this. And they're stretched much, much further out than they are with this, with this sun style. And what you're doing here with the single whip that has lots of applications is if something is coming in at you, you're stepping to the side. You're, you're grabbing the arm as the, as the force comes by. You're grabbing the arm and you're sticking the other hand out in, the, in that person's face and pulling this hand forward, using that person's energy, pulling the arm forward and stopping the person by sticking your arm out. Uh, at his shoulder, or his neck, or his face. And so the movement looks like this. It's imagine, imagining that you're grabbing and pulling a wrist out to one side and then sticking your hand out to block the other person, all right? So that's, that's how it's used. That's one of the uses. Um, this is not a class in self-defense, so we're not gonna spend much time on that. But you do have this feeling of extending, of pulling in one direction while you push in the other direction. And the feeling is like you're, it's called like reeling silk. They, they often describe it as like, it's like you're, you're pulling a silk thread and, and stretching it out. Okay, so 
I think that's pretty much the, uh, getting close to the end of the period. Let me check the time. Maybe there's time for something else. Well, it's 12 o'clock. So this is a good, this is a good stopping point. All right. So we went over it a lot and slowly, and it's a good idea to practice it. Um, once you practice it and do it um, a few times each day between now and next week, you know, you won't even be thinking about it. And the more, the more you can do it on your own, the more fun you're going to have with this, really, believe me. I mean, it's just going to be like learning a language. Once you learn uh, the phrases in a language and you start using them, it's a wonderful feeling that gives you a sense of power, right, and control. So that's what, that's what we're trying to do is, is get to a, a point where we really own this system and we can use it to benefit, you know, our health and our, our mental state. Okay, so I leave you with that, those words of wisdom. <laughs> that's what you want to call them. And we, we do this. Does everyone know what this means? This means strength and this means respect. Two very important things. We have to be strong, but we have to respect ourselves and other people. Okay? So have I'm a great sorry. week. Oh.